Hello everyone, Bashar here. We are together with a classic, although albeit late, uh, fusion calendar analysis video. This is the mildest, nicest, politest ist, ist, ist fusion I have ever seen. First of all, it's a fragment event, which means we can summon her whenever our heart desires, uh, which will mean, you know, 500 points in a champion chase maybe, or 30,000 points in a uh, P um, CVC, very lovely, and the number of total available fragments is 135. 20 of those are from uh, tournament leaderboards, 10 from the active champion training tournament, and 10 from the upcoming uh, champion chase tournament that's going to be arriving in about a week. And the structure is generally 10 to the winner and 5 each to the second and third place. I would just suggest that you don't chase these. I mean, if you are winning somehow, win of course, but you know, don't invest in these, I would say, just the fragments, right? So if you like the winner reward and you have a lot of shards lying around for the champion chest, by all means go for it. But as I said, don't plan on getting these for the fusion because you never know what the other player in your bracket has planned. It could be, you know, a bad miss. And as I said, this is a very, very generous uh, I think this is the, the most generous uh, fusion that I've seen. So we have 135 fragments. If we discount the leaderboard stuff, we go down to 115. And that makes it the only fusion that I have seen in about like 15 months of me doing fusions that allows the full skipping of Summon Rush, right? Because we have access to 115 and the Summon Rush features 15, right? So we can just fully skip the summon rush. That's an option, which is big. So let us go into the you know, details. We started off with the champion training tournament and the dragon tournament and dungeon divers yesterday. Uh, the champion training tournament features a six star mythical orb, which is extremely valuable. I mean, it's a no brainer to finish it, I would say. Uh, the dragon tournament, we have to go deep. And it is a little bit annoying because it's a dragon tournament and not a turn attack tournament, but we also do have a dungeon divers that's going on, so we'll have to overshoot terribly anyway. So I wouldn't mind. Uh, the dungeon divers requires 3.6 or 3.7k points to go for that. Then today the summon rush started. In the summon rush, we have a progressive summon event for the Monster Hunter team champions and so a few other champions. I would suggest use uh, you know going for the Archer Lady from the Barbarian faction on Colored Legendaries and the Void Monster Hunter team champions Fatalist Blade Master on uh, Voids. But it, you could also skip, right? There is that option as well. You could just skip. Uh, because as I said, it's skippable. If you go for everything else, it's going to be skippable. Uh, but these champions will be leaving in early March, maybe in the 9th of March. I'm not very sure about that, but early March, I am sure about that. And they will be unobtainable uh, afterwards, like, like Ninja. Right? Available to be obtained during the period, and after the period, they will be unobtainable anymore. And I'm guessing they will have different champions for empowerment options because they will be unobtainable after they leave. We'll see how that goes. So I would suggest not skipping this particular summon rush because the champions will not be available afterwards and you know, going for anything that can help you. And then we will, you know, uh, use our uh, artifacts uh, from Dragon to do the first artifact announcement event, five more points. Then the classic arena and ice column will arrive. I would suggest holding off the ice column for a day and you know jumping into campaign that day because it does not overlap with the dungeon divers. Wait one day, then go into the ice column tournament to handle the second dungeon divers. And the second dungeon divers is a bit long, which will mean it will require more points to, for the fragments, keep that in mind. The duration decides the number of points uh, required for the um, milestones. 
and then you know you do the ice column you're done then we have one day off which we can do whatever we want in between then the finite will start which will allow us to finish the second dungeon divers uh, then we'll do use our loot from ice column and finite to handle the second artifact enhancement event and then we have a five day champion training event with i would expect very good rewards and very high points requirement and keep in mind in champion training events you cannot do ascensions or books for points then there is a second arena to tournament which is basically free and also the second uh, the th third dungeon diver starts in the meanwhile so the finite overlaps with both dungeon divers 2 and dungeon divers 3 so if you for example overshot the ice column uh, for second dungeon divers and you do a little bit of fire night and you're done with dungeon divers too i would just su suggest stopping right there waiting one day and picking it, uh, it up where you left off when the third dungeon divers arrives then switch into the spider tournament and uh, also uh, using the loot from fire night and spider handle the third artifact event that gives you five more fragments and as you can see we can just really finish the uh, event by just uh, skipping the summer rush so ta let's take a look 10 15 20 25 30 45 50 55 60 skip 65 70 75 90 95 100 so as i said guys in all of the fusions i have seen i for the first time see a summon rush that's skippable right so the deep fragments in summon rush would be skippable most of the time but never the early fragments but of course the rewards this time around are very enticing not the summon rush rewards but the champions themselves um, that would be the way i approach so if you do decide to go for the summon rush what to do then so i am going to guess this dungeon divers will be very annoying and will require a ton of points but guys the thing is they do something very smart there they also put very good rewards there right so for example they do a 6k point dungeon divers which ends with uh, you know void chart or medium soul stone or anything then you go for it so you have to be uh, you know careful with what you skip you could you know go deep in the summon rush and skip the champion training entirely but i also would guess that the rewards are going to be you know pretty good you could skip all artifact enhancement events which i don't like you know you should find yourself something uh, you should find yourself a combination i mean you could just get five points in summer rush and skip one of the events that you don't like right there are multiple options so yeah the champion may not be very good but you know being able to summon her when you can and uh, this structure is very very nice i hope they keep it up like this but i don't think so right as i said guys i have been playing for 18 months and i have been doing fusions for about 15 months so i was quite noobish uh, for the first few fusions so i don't really know their structure very well but i would suspect this is the first time in a very long time that uh, they allowed the summonage to be optional I have never seen a optional summer rush in all the fusions that I did that started in, two, uh, in the Halloween of 2022 with Morrigan and in all of them the summer rush was a must right you couldn't skip right you would either have to win a tournament but you would have to do something extra in order to skip the summer rush if there was such an option most of the time there there wasn't even any so as I said this the structure of it is lovely and we do have the separate uh, monster hunter collaboration team champions uh, if you want to you know hear my take on the the champion and the other four and i will see you on the stream bye bye